Yeah, uh, well, just let's start spontaneously. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, that's fine. It just, yeah. Maybe, did you want to talk about your book and then we can talk about um, situation there and here and... Well, <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. My, my, my book is, uh, it's funny that you bring it up. I haven't thought of it for a long time, but in, yeah. in a way, my book reflects what's happening now but on a, on the spiritual arena uh, what i mean by that is we mm -hmm. all we all are experiencing well some people are don't even realize it yeah but we the people who know what's going on yeah are realizing that we have been lied to Mm -hmm. in so many areas science has been wrong medicine is wrong totally wrong i've been researching uh, and, and watching videos and reading articles by s very advanced scientists and doctors who are proving that what they learned in medical school is wrong what we were taught in school is wrong uh, it just goes on and on. It's not, not just medical and science and the whole thing with the environment is wrong. I mean, there's so many things that we've been fed lie after lie after lie. Yeah. And what my book, it, I wasn't intended necessarily for that, but what it shows is how I have been lied to spiritually. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, so that's, okay. that, that uh, talks about my experience and how I, I bounced around from teacher to teacher. Yeah. Um, and just like people believe today everything in mainstream media, I believe what my teachers told me. I was very young. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say that I was nine, but I wasn't. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I believed everything and I was dragged around and to, to finally that I finally I started to ask myself, why am I not there yet? With all the promises that were made, with all the techniques, and I was falling a hundred percent. I don't do anything half-assed. I, I do too, I go charge ahead sometimes to my detriment, but I, I went full on, did everything that they told me to do, followed everything, studied, chanted, meditated, you name it. Whatever you see on Facebook now, what people are doing, I did it. And only to discover that it was wrong. Um, whether they, some lied and some just didn't know any better because they were lied to and they just continue. It's just perpetuating. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, my book also talks about the good news is what I have found as a result and, um, and how I got out of that mess. Which, were, which is where I am now. And the, so, some people look at my book as a storybook and that's fine. Not everybody has that inclination. Not everybody has that. Uh, not everybody shares the values that I do. So they see it as a storybook, but some people have seen it as, oh my God, I too can resonate with that. I too have been misled. I too have been wandering around the spiritual path for so long without any results. I too am spiritually fucking exhausted <laughs> pardon my french but and um the good news is that it would be very hard to fool me now and some people yeah. think that even now i'm being fooled because i just follow everything no at some point you wake up which i did and i cannot be fooled again uh at least not spiritually and um so that's basically where it's at and people who get it People who actually get what's in it, most of them have, have come to, to meet Gabor and to study with him, knowing how he has um, freed me from the spiritual mess that I was in. And it's working very well. Mm. So that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. So what what's, what's that book? Um, what's the title? Oh, of course. Uh, the Blind Leading the Blonde. The blonde, yeah. On yeah. the Road to Freedom. And the subtitle is um, Confessions of a, of a Recovering Spiritual Junkie. 
<laughs> yeah. So it's basically similar like in, in politics. Um, so that's what you went through yeah. just in spiritual world. It's basically the same in a way, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And um, because I really wanted to talk to you, um, I'm kind of impressed that you left Canada to move to um, Hungary and you now in beautiful Budapest. Yeah. And um, I would like you to know, I would like you to, um, can you share your experience? Like, how do you find life um, maybe in Europe, in Budapest? Um, mm -hmm. Stuff that you like and dislike, especially a situation today. Um, yeah, number one, maybe how, how do you find your life there? Do you, do you like living in Budapest with Gabor and... Yeah, okay. Yeah. You yeah. enjoy that? Yeah, very much so. We we actually moved here. Um, we moved here because of, of, of financial uh, issues that we needed to resolve. The cost of living is very low here in comparison to Canada. So we we kind of it, we were kind of forced into it. The universe pretty much yanked us out of Canada even though it was very difficult initially because of family still there, uh, but we had no choice. And so we had to come. And then when we came here, uh, we discovered uh, why the universe moved us here to the best of our ability to, <laughs> to figure out the universe's plan. But it seems like there, there have been so many benefits that it's unbelievable. Every day we say, oh, thank God we did this. This is another reason why it was good. You know, and for one thing, it's beautiful. Hungary is beautiful. Budapest is a gem. It's, I mean, this picture doesn't even do it justice. And there's so many beautiful streets and neighborhoods in Budapest. It's not just one area or that looks nice it's like neighborhood after neighborhood district after district so many beautiful places the culture is incredible the people are wonderful the language is beautiful but too hard to learn <laughs> in, <coughs> in my age <laughs> I kind of gave I took a few courses but I gave up <laughs> I could see you trying hard like tr to translate stuff but it doesn't work always yeah. And you ask for help for recipes and stuff. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> but the, the, the best part, the most significant part for us was um, had to do with Gabor's teaching because the Hungarian language is incredible. Um, even though I can't speak it, Gabor and I talk about it and he, he shows me it every other day, something in the Hungarian language that shows how um, incredible it is in a sense that it's, it's an ancient language, very ancient. Yeah. And it's very, very close to the source. Even though the source is not in language, the source, you know, I don't even like to use that word because it's so spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing is not spiritual it's, it's <laughs> leaping out of spirituality but anyways for lack of a better word and the so many words in the Hungarian language uh, they built into them the words the way they, they're set up what's built into them is is, the, um, is being our, our true essence as well as how to get there. It's, it's I can't, I, I would like to give you an example, but like for example, the word vadion, it means being, but it also means value or wealth. Oh. Like there's so many words like that. It, it, the list goes on and on and maybe someday we'll do a video on that. Uh, I don't know who would be interested necessarily, but the, the, the reason this is so important is because before we came to Hungary, Gabor was already teaching what he teaches, but it was, it was missing 
some good ex clear explanations because as i said it this is language is in duality and what he teaches is not in duality but we have to use some words otherwise we can't you know when when you speak to somebody initially until they've learned to transcend the mind we're, we're, he's speaking to minds mm. and when you speak to minds you use language but none of it is accurate even the word non-duality is totally dualistic it's not accurate so but we have to use some words so even the word awakening or enlightenment I mean, there's been bastardized and misused so much so his explanations when he talked to people about what he what he does and how to do it and all that it wasn't very easy initially yeah but once he started delving into the Hungarian language, he found words and expressions that take you there. So he used those to build his new explanations. And it is remarkable. Not only in Hungarian, but he translated to English. He knew what, what to say and, and he, he found codes and clues of how to make things easier for people to get there. Because he himself got there as a result of 12 years of depression, but he does not believe that people have to go through that. He's been developing, since we've been here, which is eight years, he's been developing, based on the language, techniques, practices, and explanations that allow somebody to, to get it. In the busiest minds we've watched, busiest minds, people with all kinds of problems, if they apply the practices and the techniques, there's a hundred percent success. If you don't, there's a zero percent. There is no halfway. There's mm -hmm. it, it doesn't go that way. So it, that's what he says. It's either easy or impossible. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to do it with a mind or try to relate it to other mind-based teachings it doesn't work but if you do it exactly the way he 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 discovered and um put together as a result of the hungarian language mm -hmm. it is remarkable and it doesn't mean that it has to be in hungarian yeah. we have a marvelous hungarian group but we also have very advanced english-speaking people who know le less hungarian than i do <laughs> That's <laughs> saying a lot. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that, that was the, the main thing. And of course, because we didn't have to worry about finances anymore here, because the cost of living isn't so bad, we were able to, we devote all our time to the teaching, all of it. Write books, do videos, everything that we do, apart from eating and sleeping and <laughs> cooking the odd meal. <laughs> everything revolves around it so we're able to 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 do that freely yeah. you know so it's been very good so you basically enjoy your life there pretty much oh, well very much it's been very fruitful very very beneficial yeah, yeah. um and um, I've, I've seen your um prime minister and kind of I watched him interviewed, being interviewed. It was quite amazing to see how um, open-minded he is. Yeah. And um, yeah, he's quite a funny guy to me. And um, I, he, he might lose the next elections, unfortunately, because I find that people, they just love being tortured and, and seeing the things that mainstream media want them to see. Um, and... I would like to ask you now, like, are you in the lockdowns at the moment today? Or? No, there, there hasn't been lockdown. And we actually, for up until November 1st coming up, for quite a few months now, we didn't have to wear masks. We can go anywhere. We don't have to have the vaccine. You can, but you don't have to. We don't have to have a passport to, to get into places. Every, it's all cool. Um, with the exception, uh, well, now in... November, on November 1st it's going to change unfortunately and but not drastically we need to wear masks in the subways and public transportation which you know I to me that's got nothing to do with COVID I mean that's common sense it's flu season 
I wouldn't mind wearing a mask there just if I'm standing very cold to people, very close to people and they're sneezing or coughing. I don't know if it does much. There's scientists that say it doesn't do anything, but some say it does. I don't even care about that. I, it's, I feel, you know, like right now for, for public transportation, fine, no problem. But we don't need to, to wear it anywhere else. And as far as the vaccine, some... Um, employers and business owners have the option. It's up to them whether they want to enforce the vaccines on their employees or not. It's not a must like it is in other places. So I think it's pretty, pretty good. I, I have no complaints. Um, now when we say lockdowns, I'd like to find out because I feel that uh, lockdowns where I live in Victoria, in Melbourne, um, are much different and much more strict than anywhere else in the world, because um, we we are close to three hundred days um, in lo like in lockdown. We are still people reckon we are free, but we are not. We basically now we are allowed to go all over the town. Our lockdowns are five kilometers lockdowns where we can go five kilometers from home. Oh. Um, yeah, basically, you, they can penalize you wherever you go. Like I was sick. I, I just had a broken arm, had fracture. Um, I couldn't, it, within five kilometers, like no one, people were offering to, you know, help me, you know, but I couldn't really risk uh, for someone to get penalized to, you know, how how would you know? Because if you ring, if you call police, they, they, they tell you basically you have to take a risk or they don't know, like all government bodies, like for COVID. Um, like you have to take a risk to be penalized or not, depending on the officer that you might meet on a, on a way. Um, so it is kind of tough for people who live on their own, you know, you live on your own, you don't see anyone, you either work from home or you don't, or you lose your job if you don't get vaccinated. And um, so we had a basically curfew from nine, or oh, a nine to five or whatever during the night. And um, yeah, basically no visits at home. You can't visit anyone. You couldn't see anyone outside and uh, you can get a takeaway coffee, but it has to be within five kilometers from your place. And you are not allowed to um, demonstrate because um, it's treated as illegal. So you can get arrested and get penalized five to $6,000, four to $6,000 or something. Um, and yeah, the other day we had um, all these rallies and stuff and they called um, builders, the builders actually were, because the builders were told if they didn't get the, their vaccine booked by Friday, they would lose a job or um, if they need to get the first vaccine, don't get it booked. Otherwise they couldn't come to work and feed their families, right? So they basically, there was a group of them demonstrating for days and they, they said they were gonna be every day and it was quite tough. They were called by every single channel, um, far right wing um, for basically um, not agreeing to what was going on here. They thought it was quite um, rough. And I'd like to ask you, when you have your lockdowns, what are you allowed to do? I, I, I don't like, are you allowed to travel anyway? Because I can see my family members oh. traveling even to other countries in Europe, if yeah. they were under, I don't understand yeah. that. Well, we don't have lockdowns. You don't have, there's no curfew. There's no lockdown right now. There was months ago. Yeah. And all that was is that you, you don't leave your house after eight o'clock at night. I think it's from five o'clock in the morning till eight at night, you can go anywhere. But right now, what we also have, it's a beautiful thing. I think I'm going to take advantage of it as well. Is that if you had COVID, you can go and get a blood test. And they show, the blood test will show that you have antibodies in there. Like you, that your body's resisted it and is, has immunity against it. And if that's the case, they give you a certificate that says that, and then you can travel to other countries in Europe with that. I know uh, I have a funny, <coughs> funny story. Gabor and I had COVID not too long ago, a few weeks, oh, well, about eight, two months ago. And we went to see our doctor, very good doctor. We were fine. It's not, we didn't even need any medication or anything. It's not 
you know, the end of, it's not pleasant, but it's not the end of the world. I had worse flus in the past. But anyway, we went to, to our doctor and the assistant was there and um, she wanted to shake my hand. And I said, oh no, I shouldn't shake your hand because I have COVID. She says, oh no, no, please shake it. I want to get it because I want the antibodies because I need to visit my son in Germany. <laughs> you know, very well, different. Yeah. Different. yeah. Yeah. We haven't done it yet. One of these days we'll go in and get, you know, the blood test and to show that we have the antibodies. <laughs> Not that we're traveling anywhere, but uh, I don't know if we can travel anywhere other than a few countries. Yeah, it depends on the countries if they if they'll accept us. But, but you still can travel, uh, leave your country to yeah. travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. We're not locked down here, but we don't want to necessarily. We, you know, there's it's not yeah. very pretty. Like I love London. I wouldn't go there now. Yeah. You know, I, uh, the other countries like Canada and the States, it's really bad. The States, at least, they're different states in the st in the United States. Some of them are not so united. And uh, reunited <laughs> states. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they they have different rules and they're more open. And some of them are horrific. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're happy here. It feels safe. But you could go to Spain, for an instance. Oh yeah, I think yeah. so. I haven't tried. I didn't get the certificate yet, but I have no reason to go. Mm. Our work is here. Our life is here. We're we are doing fine. We are okay. So you don't have any of these things. Are you you were not in lockdown for like two hundred days or hundred days or three hundred days or something rather. Yeah, nothing like it. Yeah. No, no. What we, we were initially twice, it was on and off, and now it's not. It mm. may come back, I don't know, because the European Union puts a lot of pressure on countries. Uh, yeah. they, don't, they don't like our, our prime minister very much because he uh -huh. has a mind of his own. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which you would expect a leader to have. Yes. If, uh, if a leader is a pushover, then uh, I don't know. Why would anyone want him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, it's just uh, just interesting to me because um, not that we are isolated only because we are really far from the rest of the world, but we we kind of, we couldn't leave our town and still can't. Like for about 300 days, I don't know, like I can't even near 300 days, like, meaning almost all this time we just could, we can't leave the town can't leave the state we can't go to another state of australia well, like let alone go somewhere internationally unless you were someone famous and if well, someone died like funerals are no no um unless you are famous and you're a celebrity then you're allowed to come and you know attend a funeral but um you know whoever else it is like you know, people were in very really difficult situations and they couldn't come from sydney to melbourne to look after their loved ones so yeah um yeah it's it's pretty tough and and a couple of days ago basically they introduced this draconian bill um our whatever in our state um the guy who is Premier of Victoria, now he's allowed to basically um, call up, um, on lockdown whenever he likes, like whenever he likes without asking anyone. So basically he's got a right to do whatever he likes. And um, what's really interesting to see is people are really supporting him here. And because he's really high on polls, they just love him and they love self-torture. They, they reckon they've done really good because the rest of the world has so many deaths you know and they reckon that we are in really good position because not so many died but no one sees that we are really not only that we are like we are vaccinated for like over 95 percent the first dose 92 percent and it's going to be 100 percent. he wants everyone he wants no exemptions he said if people are really sick it just it it doesn't work with him so no exemptions at all everyone has to be vaccinated but still, you know, he can 
like imply lockdowns whenever he likes. And people, of course, who didn't get vaccinated now, they opened up finally last week. And um, so we can go around. But if you're not vaccinated, you can't get inside to get a coffee. You can have a takeaway. You can't have a drink. You can't go into a restaurant. So no one will. You can't go to hairdresser. And um, so it's um, pretty tough. And um, about 45,000 people have left the States when they could and more, much more are to leave. But they obviously there is heaps more loving <laughs> this torture. So, yeah, it's interesting to hear from you. So what do you think about what like uh, so your prime minister, does he go too far, like being against the, the European Union or, you know? Well, he's in a tough spot mm. because he gets so much flack from them. This is just my understanding. I could be wrong about this. Yeah. He's in a tight spot. I don't know how he does it because there are rules from the European Union and, and some of them are not the greatest. And he also has to um, support his own country and and rule his country in the way that is suitable for the culture here and the people here mm. so <clears throat> he doesn't have much freedom but within the range that he has he's doing a pretty good job i think um <clears throat> I, I you know i i it's hard to, from, from, my, from my perspective, to know the ins and outs. Nobody really knows the ins and outs. But what <laughs> I do appreciate about him is that he, he stands for what he believes the best he can under the circumstances. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've heard that also your immigration laws uh, might have been a bit different to most European countries like, uh, like Germany and similar. Totally, and thank God that he, that that's because of him. And he got a lot of flack from the European Union because of that. But what people don't understand is that this country has been invaded so many times for, through history between the Turks and, and the, the Germans and you name it. it you know, when, when, I, when my very first visit here, in 2012, before we moved here, we went on this hop on, hop off bus with a no top and you just see everything. And there's for two hours and somebody speaking on the microphone explaining what this is, what that is. And, and it was amazing to me because, you know, every place that we saw, you would say something like, this is a statue of the king that saved us from that enemy. And this is the, the, the castle where he kept his daughter to, and promised that he would keep her there if he won that war or this. I'm making shit up now because I don't remember the exact details. But it was all in that, that kind of uh, feeling to it. it mm -hmm. Showing us where the heroes in this country, and there's so, so many of them, and there's so many statues of them, save the country from this, save the country from that, fought against this enemy, because everybody wanted Hungary. The land is fantastic, the earth is fantastic, it's beautiful, it's 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 a wonderful place. So, you know, I, I when I was on the bus, I was saying, hmm, <laughs> in the states you don't you might or in canada you don't really see that you know here is where we killed the indians and conquered the land that wasn't ours to begin with you know it's quite different culture and many people don't understand that yes. so when there was this in, it was really an invasion people coming through the borders they didn't have any documents they didn't have permission to come yeah. You know, even when I used to go from Canada to the States, my God, the scene at the border was awful. They needed papers, they need ID, they need this, they need that. And here, all these people are coming, and a lot of them were not refugees. They were just people that wanted a better life, and they're coming from countries that are okay. They're not yeah. necessarily from Syria, where they were bombing the, the shit out of them. You know, and without any idea, and they're just you know, marching in, it was, it felt like an invasion. 
So I can understand why a prime minister of a country that has suffered so much of that in the past would be reluctant to let them all in just like that without any documentation, any, any proof of who they are and are they criminals? Are they, are they really suffering in their country? Nothing. And, you know, I, after the first uh, migration that happened in, in Germany and everywhere else, we were on a plane to, to London and we sat by somebody from Germany and he said, it is horrific there. The, the women are being raped and people are being robbed. He said, it's just terrible. Some neighborhoods, they can't go out in this. Talk about a lockdown. It's a lockdown imposed by immigrants. It's, it's awful. And in Sweden, Sweden it's, it's bad and they, they don't know what to do with them. In many mm -hmm. countries, and I know in, in England too. Yeah. In London, we were there. It wasn't, it wasn't like it used to be. It wasn't as pleasant. Mm. And so, I mean, I'm not against people immigrating. Lord knows I immigrated here, you know, and Gabor immigrated to Canada. But if it's, if it's few at a time and for a good reason with the right documents and they vet you, they know that you're not a criminal, that's one thing. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, so, yeah. So I, 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 I'm grateful that he, he did that. And he got very bad press for it. And now a lot of countries are realizing that he was right, but no one's apologizing. No one's saying, yeah, you know what, man, you were right. Sorry for, for blaming you for being difficult or, or non-compliant. Nobody does that now. He's not praised for what he did. Yeah. You know? I saw him some way saying to others um, um, in European Union, he said something like, I've got no problem, but Germany has. Because all these people want to go to Germany. They don't want to stay in Hungary either. So that's what he said, which is common sense, I presume. Because they had they want bet like better like they, they want to choose where they want to live. So if you really want to choose, it means it's not that I don't see it as an emergency situation if you go for higher standards. And um because they know they can get away with things, you know. I read um, an article that was in Build the other day, um, in German Build. It, it talked about um, Sweden being in bad position. And, and I know like my, my friends and my son's friends and some bad stuff has happened. Like you, you get robbed, basically they take everything out of your house and they, they, they rip off your card, but police comes and they, they know who's done it. They can't do, yeah. they can't do anything. Yeah. So you're done for, they can't help you at all. Yeah. And, um, and it's, yeah, it's really too bad because it, it spoils it for, for good people. Like, Mm. In, in this country, uh, there are Muslims and mm. are Chinese, but they came in legally and properly. Yes. And they're doing great work. Our cardiologist mm. is, is from Syria and he's, he's wonderful and his family mm. is wonderful. And there's, yeah. you know, there's stores that owned by Persians and they sell their kosher meats and, and the, a lot of Chinese restaurants, they all learn the language. They all speak Hungarian. I'm the only one who can get it. I mean, I can, get, I can get by, but not that fluent. But uh, they, they all learn the language and, and they, they live here like it's, they respect the country. Mm. And it's, it's, it's nice, you know. Yeah. I have nothing against foreigners or, or any other um, religions or, or, or people from other countries, but there's a, a certain amount of respect and <laughs> and legitimacy that has to yeah. come with it. Yeah, true. Like, I'm, I'm, where I live, Melbourne is a mul multicultural city, but n people don't bomb the town and bomb people. They don't blow us, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> like everything. It's, they don't do such a thing. There's no bombings as much, you know, and stuff like over there that you hear. Um, so anyway, I can see still that they're praising Merkel, but, but, for lovely job she's done and i'm thinking it's really pathetic i don't know who is covering everything up or is it you know there is lots of things involved like why she did it where it's coming from america where it came like whether you know it's all some kind of are you owe me this i owe you that and she had to do what she's done you know yeah, yeah it's kind of scary and europe isn't the same I a couple of years ago and i london first thing in a, in a cab 
it wasn't cab was actually um uber driver i had a real encounter it wasn't really pleasant and i'm an older person and um yeah i had like he gave me a drive around and he asked for my phone number wanted to take me for lunch and uh, he wouldn't like and he didn't even take me to the station he just drove me around and i was like oh my god and i said you're going the wrong way and i was didn't even know where i was going first time in london but anyway, I mean, it's interesting. You don't know unless you go there. Well, yeah. 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 But yeah, yeah, I understand when you say, you know, in Canada, you know, you don't have that history apart from that Indian, you know, what happened in the past. And, and um, there's lots of history in Hungary and which is really beautiful, like Europe being old continent. Well, in Australia, it's similar, like in Canada, perhaps we just had aboriginals, like we had prisons, the way, um, you know, the settlement came here. Um, basically, they were just prisoners and, um, and the gods. And um, what you can visit is basically that. And, and um, aboriginal land that um, has been taken away from them. And, and now if you want to go for aboriginal land, like you have to have permit to go through there and, um, you know, and they love their drink and, and it's, it's a bit sad um, what's going on here as well from that perspective. But they, they're good people. They're not violent. Like if you go to New Zealand, Maori, they're kind of more violent. They're yeah. aggressive. They were more like fighters. Aboriginals are just peaceful, lo lovely, lovely people. But they do love their drink, unfortunately. Apparently, they learned to drink uh, during the Second World War when, when, uh, from Americans, some say, when they came around or whatever, I don't know. Um, and, um, and Westerners, actually, they, you know, they deliberately gave them to drink. So, yeah, anyway. But it was all days, like Melbourne, it was all day land, but you, you can mainly see anyone. There's no more Aboriginals around here. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. 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 So um can you tell me um about what now what you're doing with Gabor? Like um you you're doing your meetings at the moment and still yeah. 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 Is it via Zoom or in person or I, well uh, overseas is in Zoom, of course. The English part is in Zoom. Uh yeah. He has a lot of private students now. We're finding that uh, people who study privately on a regular basis do really, really well. We had a group, but we kind of dissolved it temporarily because we found that if people get lost in a the group, they, they, they hide behind the group. And we find that the, <coughs> for the people who are doing private lessons were doing much better. Yeah. We don't do this for the sake of doing it or for, for the money. We do it. We, Gabor is, um, I call him Mr. Tachlis. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Jewish expression. It means right to the point, result oriented. You know, yes. no, no flim yeah. flam, you know, oh, come to satsang, sit and relax in my presence. Uh, we don't, we don't yeah. like that. We just want people to succeed. We want people to get it because life, yeah life on this plane right now is a piece of shit mm -hmm. you, you, you just described it that way i mean it's not just in australia and if you don't have a way to go inside and find that peace that is our birthright then you're screwed basically i mean like what else is there yeah and so uh yeah it's um yeah so that's what we do and in hungary we have a group uh be, that meets in person, uh, we meet every second weekend. And then in between, we have lots of sessions online and it's mm -hmm. going very well, very advanced. It, it, it does make a difference uh, to study with Gabor in person, it does make a difference. Because the, um, the mind is very tricky. And we've watched it over the years, how it, it tries to infiltrate what what we're trying to do which is leaping out of the mind and into um, the universal intelligence that's in the body that's where all the answers are that's where all the solutions are that's where peace is real peace i'm not talking about peace of mind that's still in the mind yes but 
if if this is if this is life and this is past and future and we walk around hoping that sometime in the future something will happen this is all mind based this is all in the mind mm-hmm. time, time is in the mind what we're doing yeah. is leaping out of it mm-hmm. through the techniques and the exercises that he teach that Kabor teaches and but the mind wants to bring us down consistently yeah and a lot of people that come have a lot of spiritual baggage like i had um you know constantly comparing what they heard to what they've learned before and that's brings you right back to here mm-hmm. so and it's hard for someone to catch themselves doing that i've found it very hard to catch myself but i have had the luxury of talking with gabor consistently about what about this what about this what about that why am i not able to <clears throat> feel the peace today like i did yesterday and <clears throat> it's not always about an, getting a right explanation it's about him pinpointing where your where it is that your mind brought you down where it is that your, your mind interfered and tried to take control again because he he sees that he knows how, how the mind works he's worked with so many people he knows mm-hmm. exactly He knows from the language that they're, they're speaking, he knows where they're stuck. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not this holy guru, omniscient, omnipresent, like the Indian gurus like to claim, oh, I know everything you're thinking. And it's not like that. But he knows from the language, from the body language, from the speech language, and, and from what they say that is happening, he knows. Because it's, um, everyone ha- goes through that and it's and we had the problem too is that we've been manipulated we're we're using a mind that's been manipulated and programmed we have program reality we have program mind and program reality because of that and spiritually spirituality is just as bad as everything else we've been manipulated and programmed spiritually mm-hmm. and it, that makes it hard Mm-hmm. Um, and if we go back there then it's impossible to leave if we if we stay there using the technique then it's easy that's why it's either easy or impossible but do you think today's situation um like the madness at the moment around the world is gonna might help people look into themselves because as you said before Um, it, you, you know, they say usually suffering makes us have a look, which is like I, I came into this world because of that. Yeah. So do you think people are going to go more crazy or, uh, but at the same time, um, they might look into themselves and investigate to see what they really are and find that peace that passes all understanding? But as you It you might, know. but it, it, what we found is that it does require some kind of guidance. Because a lot of the peace that people feel or find, uh, whether it's a result of suffering or as a result of meditation, it's a band-aid. A lot of those are band-aids. It's not the real peace. If your mind is blah, 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 you know, going a, a hundred miles a minute like this, sometimes even out of fatigue or, or a crisis, it might stop for a while and you feel, ah, I'm peaceful now. But that's temporary peace that doesn't last very long. It feels good. And the problem with that kind of peace is that there's such, there's a temporary satisfaction, a ha moment or a realization. And because that people feel satisfied and don't want to go further, there's so much more to go. Yeah. It's not that there's a place to go to, but there is the leap out of the mind is completely out of the mind. Whereas a temporary peace is still peace of mind. It's not the same peace. Mm. So it, there's more, you know. I, I mean, my previous teaching before meeting Gabor was so intellectual, yeah. so full of aha moments. I write about it in, in my book of how if people have like mental orgasms, like, oh, now I get it. Oh, now, yeah be the love don't love be the love oh that sounds so good <laughs> this is my statement now i know but but now i know what does it do 
It makes mm -hmm. you docile. It makes you complacent. It puts you to sleep. Yes. Meditation is a drug that puts you to sleep because I feel, oh, now I know. Now I get it. I can just sit in the presence of my teacher and everything is going to be fine. No, I have to do the looking in. Gabor doesn't do it for me. I have to do it, but I have to follow his explanations and techniques and practices. Otherwise, it doesn't work. You know, mm -hmm. I, when I came to him too, I so many times I had realizations based on what I was doing with, with him even. And I was so uh, happy with it. because And my, my, my tenancy from my past learnings yeah. has been so corrupt by thinking, now I realize it, now I can relax. It's not the right kind of relaxation. Yeah. The real relaxation or the real peace is in completely getting out of that mess mm -hmm. and every time there's a aha moment or a comparison to something from a piece from the past it feels familiar now i feel good then we're right back into time right back into duality yeah. so it, it's a tricky thing it it's actually should be very easy and natural because it's our natural beingness uh, the, the universal intelligence is what is running our body, which is where we are. You know, here it is. It's not too far. <laughs> you know, it's not too difficult. But we've been bastardized. We've been programmed so poorly, so badly, or maybe so effectively from their perspective. That makes it hard. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some kind of willingness to, to leap out even out of the things that have helped us in the past. You know, and spiritual people like I was, sometimes it's difficult because if a mantra helped me in the past, I don't want to let it go. You know, or if, if a chanting helped me in the past, I, th those have become my friends that have helped me in the past. But that's the past. And that was still on this level. They relaxed me temporarily. So they were friends in the past, but now they become obstacles because it keeps me dormant instead of leaping out of that. So this is, this is a, not just a leap out of the mind, it's a leap out of spirituality. Mm -hmm. It's an awakening from spirituality. It's not just awakening from one dream to another. Well said, I like that. Yeah, I know uh, because I met so many people um, who said exactly what you said before, um, they couldn't leave their previous experiences or previous um, little insights or highs. Um, some of them have, you know, um, had really kind of like great experiences is that everything was happening by itself, but they couldn't let go of that either. And as you said, previous practices, yeah, okay, I've done Vipassana meditation, I've done TM, so I learned a little bit, you know, I meditated, had mantra, and with this one, it, like I felt the body, you know, and um, I, it all stays with, with people and they all like come back to what, it, what they felt good with without realizing that um, actually what experience in is, is constant. It's what's happening in this moment. It's like ING at the end, it's what it is right now. It's in this very instance, what we experience. And um, yeah, so, um, and sometimes it can really st stuff us around and we don't know what to do. People don't know. Uh, how they go how to you know and, and they then get uh, hooked into these circles yeah. as you said and um it's completely different story now they ho hooked into a circle it's another grasping or clinging uh, rather than you know you know ha having that openness to hear really from the right place yeah so if a gabor speaks and there is openness to hear you know what he's saying you know it's you know, easy done, but as you said, you had to do everything yourself. You, ha you had to test your own meal. Yeah, exactly. That's a very good way to put it. Yeah. You can't yeah. just eat the menu. <laughs> yeah. You have to actually eat it yourself. I can't piggyback on his experience and on his whatever, wherever he lives. Yeah. I can't piggyback on that, but I can learn from it. Mm. And, and he can correct me 
if I ask him questions, if I talk to him, if people don't talk to him, he can't help them. He, you know, he's not like a psychic or he's not interested in reading minds. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but if somebody's looking for help, he's, he's right there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, and, you know, as, as you said, you know, a big problem is you, we trust these people and especially if you're desperate and open and, open and you really want it and you really trust these people 100% and you tend to be tricked at the same time. So it's really like about coming across someone genuine uh, who knows how to approach you and, um, and not to say that, okay, I know better and um, or you'll, one day you'll become like me. And most don't tell you that it's your birthright. Mm -hmm. I mean... You know, um, like I learned with this arm now, like someone said to me that they asked me a question, like he, he, they said like, oh, you're saying I'm not doing anything. I don't believe so. Um, I believe that I do lots of things, maybe some, but I just, just you know, gave an example. I said, I was check like, we, we take everything for granted. Like I move my arms and I speak and, as, as we are doing this, lots of things are happening without our control. The heart's beating, our eyes are, can, you know, are watching, and there is some wearing behind it, or whatever it is. And, you know, I'm moving my arm, but this time I couldn't move. Uh, like a couple of weeks ago, I couldn't even lift it at all. And I was like, oh my God, now I need to learn. Uh, I can l lift it a bit now, but I'm learning one by one how to lift the whole, the whole arm up all the way because shoulders got so many movements. There are so many muscles and to move it and so many bones in there, right? And I can't move it. Now I'm trying to move it myself and it doesn't work. I, they have to teach me. And it's so, how people do it, it's so slack. When the nature makes you, it brings you to this world, a, a package, right? Yeah. So you've got it all, you've got it all. And yeah. you know, but you have a little child, it's, it's born and it does, and, and it's, it's enlightened, it's light. People call it enlightenment, but no one goes, no one prays to that child. No one goes like, oh, like sees the child as a messenger or kisses its feet. No, we, but we, we see another guru and we do, yeah. Yeah, we beat it out of them. And, yes. and that's, that's the problem. We're, we're trained from day one to crime and punishment, to rewards if you do something good. And we're trained to listen to authority and yes. not to ourselves. We are trained to, to doubt what we feel, to doubt mm -hmm. what we experience, to not be tactile anymore. Don't touch, don't touch. The, when we're born, the, the body is introduced to us as a liability. If something hurts, that means something's wrong. We're totally screwed up about the body. And then mm. spirituality and said, you're not the body, you're not the body. Another major screw up. Yeah, if you're everything, you are everything. The body is included and the body contains the universal intelligence. It's run by the universal intelligence. No yes. doctor knows how the body works. Yeah. I don't care what they study, but we're taught to listen to authority. If you've got a lot of degrees, yeah, and you know what you're talking about. I don't need to experience anything. I'll just read his book or that book or they go to that lecture. I mean, there, there are spiritual teachers that are very famous and, and have many books and many degrees and they're writing nothing. What they're saying is nothing. There's nothing in there that tells me what to do so that I will become awake as well. Mm -hmm. Just hearing about somebody's lofty state does nothing for me. I've heard that already. Mm -hmm. And it puts them on this pedestal and it makes you feel like they can get it, but I can't. That's the biggest mm -hmm. lie ever. <laughs> yeah. It's like about learning intellectually uh, additional knowledge. But... Uh, in a way, I don't know, like, it feels as if you know nothing. When you kind of, when there is a scene of that, which is all of a sudden, really, just like that, uh, that hypnotism, when it, you know, leaves you, the hypnosis of 
being, you know, such and such, you know, this is me, I'm a good female or male, a good or bad student. And, you know, in school, they were teaching me how to become a good taxpayer, how to get a good job and pay my tax and, you know, be a good citizen, good, good, good sheep, be a good sheep or whatever. And then one day you might snap out of it if you're lucky, right? And then all of a sudden you see, Jesus, I know nothing. I literally, I know nothing. It just, yeah, amazing. I know. Mm. I used to interview teachers, spiritual teachers. I interviewed quite a, a few. And I remember I was going to interview one because uh, he, had a, he had an endorsement by Eckhart Tolle. So I thought, oh, this must be really good. So I started to prepare for the interview. I, I started reading his book. I had to put it down. It was all research. There's no experience, everything. This one said this, this one then said this one. If you compare this to that and you compare that to that, oh my God. And the description of the lofty state and the, the behaviors that go with it and the characteristics, oh, there's no end to it. Oh, bullshit. Yeah. You yeah. know, wonderful quotes, but that quote doesn't do anything for me. It just no. relaxes the mind temporarily and I feel satisfied. So why bother? leaping out of the mind when I feel so good by reading a quote. <laughs> Been there, done that, sweetheart. You know, bought the t-shirt. It doesn't work. No. You can finish now if you want to. And um, thank you very much for, for your chat. Thank you. It's wonderful. Also, you. Yeah, anytime, anytime. If you feel yeah. restricted, and um, which I'm sure you do, and, and, and frustrated with the lockdown, you can write to me. We can talk anytime. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, all the best. Say hi to Gabor. I will. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.